National Business Academy welcome you all on this great and amazing platform of learning. It is well said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. So with special excitement and I'm pleased I'm really sorry. So with special excitement, I'm pleased to welcome Ms. Surbi Arora on behalf of the entire team of Acru Aviation Private Limited and Asiatic International Business Academy. It is an honor for me to introduce our special guest of the day in the International Webinar 2020. Thank you so much, Ricky. And um, uh, just a moment. I have not completed the introduction oh, part. Sorry. <laughs> okay completely fine now. Uh, Surbi is current, Ms. Surbi is currently an independent consultant where she is helping startups to accelerate growth. She provides consultancy in diverse domains, GTM strategy, strategic brand building, integrated communications, sales strategy, and business development. She is passionate <coughs> about education and is currently building an online learning institution, Lernofa, that builds competencies to help people in accelerating their learning and career growth curve. Prior to this, she has worked in the FMCG domain with Racket Bank Kaiser, handling the sales of the entire health portfolio, including renowned brands like Detol, Wheat, Move, Strepsil, etc., across multiple geographies in India. In her various startup stints, she had experience across functions ranging from strategy, marketing, partnerships, team building, marketing operations to business development in diverse sectors like media, technology, fintech, edtech, blockchain, and FMCG. Today, we have a gigantic opportunity to learn from Ms. Surbi. Now, Ms. Surbi, it's all over to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me and uh, for your team to actually reaching out to me. So I'm personally very excited to personally talk about this topic because somehow I really relate to this. Um, so, you know, because you have given me such, uh, given such an elaborate introduction, so I'll skip all that part and straight away come to what we are doing currently. And uh, do you want me to share the screen of the deck for the session? Yeah, please. Mm, just a second. I don't see an option to actually share a screen. I think you might have disabled that. Okay. Uh, no. And now I can. Now I can. Okay. Uh, so why this topic? Right, so, uh, so I'll actually skip all the introduction part because I think she has done a great job. And anyway, we, I've been given way uh, to less of time and I think this topic deserves quite a lot of time. Um, so why basically this topic and why I was personally excited to come and talk about Resumer, right? Uh, just to give a little bit of snapshot, uh, when I was in my business school, um, I uh, had to miss all my placement uh, due to some family emergency. And by the time I was graduating, I did not have a job, right? And I think uh, a lot of people these days are in the similar boat when due to pandemic, it's really hard to actually get a job. And you know, you keep trying and it's a very hard journey. So I guess um, what really changed for me that those are the inputs I can share with you all, which would be helpful. Uh, so in my journey, I really learned that you know, your approach and resume can be immensely powerful in landing a great job interview. So I was uh, doing, adopting very, very traditional ways of reaching out to employers and I was not hearing back from them. I think I, I, I wrote approximately 200 emails and hardly any response, right? And then I just made slight changes in my approach of how I reach out to people and what sort of resume I reach out with. And that landed uh, me approximately, you know, 100 job interview calls. Right. So approach and resume can be immensely powerful running great job interviews. Of course, after that interview, it's your skill set, your interview, how you actually, you know, turn that opportunity around depends on you. But at least the first step is to crack it through uh, through a great resume. So let's talk about what are the fundamentals of a great resume. And after, uh, say, you know, 20, 25 minutes, uh, we, we can just open the floor for questions if you have, have any. So why it is so important uh, to have well-crafted resume? 
uh, I'm facing a little bit of uh, a network issue, so I'll just stop my video so that screen doesn't go off. Yeah, so what is the role of uh, CV or resume on the final interview? So basically, this is the first conversation you have with the recruiter, right? Uh, so before you even get the call of interv uh, interviewer of the uh, or, or the recruiter or the organization, this is the first opportunity you get to converse with them. So the goal of the resume is not to get you the job. It's not actually to get you the job offer. It's just to land you for the interview, right? So because this is the first conversation, it's really important that you have very, very well crafted resume so that you can have a great conversation. So it, it should actually give a very good snapshot of an individual's brand. Let's say, you know, on, on TV, you watch some advertisement and uh, you are really intrigued by it. You know, it moves you and you're actually excited to find out what that brand is about. So basically this, this resume is a snapshot of your individual brand, your individual story. So you have to make it exciting enough for the recruiter to feel the need to meet you the way you feel the need to know more about the brand when you watch an amazing advertisement, right? So what are going to be the learning objectives from this short session? So I will talk about principles of making the CV, the format and the communication, tips for using keywords, how to use keywords and what exactly is the thoughtful content which should go online and what are the few strategies and tips uh, so basically you know talking about who is the cv targeted to so the most common mistake is thinking that cv is all about you of course it is but it is actually for the recruiter right so successful resumes are not about you or me as much as they are about what you that what you can do personally for the target audience for the recruiter for the organization right so basically that resume should tell me tell the recruiter that what are you capable of and what do you bring on the table so a lot of times you know we get very emotional by making a resume you know how much we have done and we start talking everything about uh, from very childhood, talking about family history, et cetera, right? But we have to be very careful and keep in mind whatever we are writing, you know, each and every word, does that help me or does that help the recruiter understand what I bring on the table, right? So that is what we have to understand that who is the CV targeted to? And when we keep in mind that it's only the recruiters, then we will be more rational while we are drafting it, right? And coming to the point, how to catch attention in the first six to eight seconds. So when I was uh, uh, on the side of, uh, you know, as an applicant, I used to think it's so unfair that we spend so much of time making the resume and we're looking for job and recruiters don't even spend, you know, more than 10, 15 seconds. Well, I used to be very irritated by that fact. But when I actually started hiring, I realized how hard it is for the recruiters to spend any more than that, right? So when I'm, um, you know, hiring people, I, I my inbox is spammed with hundreds of applications. And at one given point of time, usually there are so many open roles, not just one. So it's not humanly possible for a recruiter to go through each and every minute detail. So actually a lot of research has been shown that recruiter on an average spends maximum six to 10 seconds on a resume. And it's actually, you know, you might be thinking right now, how is it even possible to actually gauge the qualities? Well, a person gets really trained and it gets very easy to actually gauge within seconds to understand whether the person fits or not. So it's really important for you while you are drafting that you lead up with your strengths first and talk about a lot of your competencies and keywords. We will delve into a lot of these details later. So very basic things like what are the specifics of creating the ultimate CV, right? Um, firstly, coming to the format. Um, so a lot of times what we do is we just go to the internet, uh, we just copy any random format and we think that it will work for, for us, right? But when we copy any random XYZ format available there, how are we sure that that resume, that format actually ended up landing a job for somebody? We are not sure, right? So I think that's a very bad approach to follow to start copying all the formats available out there. 
because what eventually happens if you see if you google formats of resume you will find hundreds of templates and all it will do is confuse you so the best way actually is to make a very fresh document with no template you just take inspiration from template but actually make a fresh google doc right you make a fresh doc and you start implementing those fine things on your fresh doc and choose a format that actually works for you say you are accountant a different format is actually advisable for you if you are a creative professional a very creative format is advisable to you so there is no one size fits all approach that you know there is this is one format that gets your job no it actually differs profession to profession industry to industry so you have to choose a format that works for you then font has to be really easy to read so there are a lot of fonts which are very cursive and ornate etc right so you don't have to make it very beautiful resume you have to make it more legible resume right so choose font that is easy and font color again choose something which goes by your industry the more creative roles uh, more creative industries they appreciate use of more bold colors more variety in the resume and consulting and more serious professions finance they look for more subtle uh, subtle colors subtle fonts so again everything you are doing you are doing from the point of view of who is the target audience now the target audience is the recruiter target audience is your industry so everything you do is from the point of view of that so font size again it has to be legible enough now talking about bullet points uh we should make a point that everything we do on resume is not in a paragraph form because when i am i as a recruiter am skimming information i am actually going through something in you know 6 to 10 seconds i cannot spend time on a paragraph so what i'll do is i just quickly glance through the bullet points because that's how the human psyche is right and the bullet points should be all you know aligned to the left because that's how english is read right left to right so it has to be aligned to the left and very quickly i can glance through and bullet point should not be any longer than two lines because anything longer than that is just too long for a bullet point maybe you can just break it down uh coming to the layout and the margins uh layout you actually have to organize sections of your resume you have to keep sure that you keep each section uniform right so ba basically you are treating this as a very very sanitary document which is your advertisement this is your personal advertisement which is targeted for organizations to get your job now just just keep in mind when you watch an advertisement you see everything is so amazingly drafted right so you have to put in your that effort to actually make it that beautiful that consistent that you know when you when you make uh, some some text in uh, bold you make it bold everywhere that complete text if you are using same page margins um, on the right same is on the left same is on the bottom and top right so you have to make sure that it's a very consistent beautiful well crafted document and resume length is something which is really debated upon right so some people say that it's okay to have two three four pages resume um so having actually you know uh, hired for multiple roles in lot of organizations um i i really feel that one page is really enough no matter what is your level of expertise i mean if you look at some resumes which keep floating around of bill gates or um uh, uh, a tesla ceo right so even they have one page resume with such fantastic experiences plethora of organizations of work so why can't we especially freshers so sometimes i feel so shocked when people reach out to me with some sort of help and um, as freshers uh, it's, it's they're looking for the first job and their resume is 3 to 4 pages and they say you know we can't cut it short i mean that's that's crazy because as a recruiter it's not a justifiable uh, uh, expectation for me to actually you know even look at a resume which is more than one page um uh, then some tips for using keywords in your resume right so i think you guys must have come across this term called ats softwares now ats softwares are very customized solutions uh, for the companies now they are so sophisticated and they can be actually programmed to search for resumes with keywords related to the job requirements they can count and rank the resumes like when when hundreds and thousands of resumes are entered in the ats software they can actually count and rank resumes in order of keyword frequency 
they can place a higher value on more important keywords, right? So ATS softwares are really sophisticated in how they operate and function. And they, that's how they really ease the load of recruiter. So it's really important for us to actually use keywords and phrases intelligently and strategically in our resume. Now, how to actually find great keywords? Now, that's another question altogether. So again, it depends on industry and role that you're applying for. The best way that, that always works for me, um, I act, so if, for example, I'm looking for strategy or marketing job. I will just look for uh, people who are working in that role on LinkedIn or any other pro, uh, platform. And I will just see what is the job description look like? Uh, what are the kind of job description in their LinkedIn profile looks like? Uh, you know, how do they measure their achievements, etc. So in those descriptions, you find the keywords which are highly targeted, right? Second way that I look for keywords for my particular domain is, um, if I'm looking for strategy and marketing, I will go to strategy and marketing job descriptions of three, four companies. I will see what are the consistent uh, keywords used across. Those I will try to, you know, uh, intertwine in the way I uh, actually, you know, make my story in my resume. So that's one way to actually find the keywords which are relevant for your resume. But keywords are like super, super important to use because uh, when I actually talked about spending only six to 10 seconds on a resume, that's what I actually meant by it. I will just quickly look for keywords. So if, for example, I'm hiring for sales and uh, sales and marketing professional, I look for some sort of proficiency in analytical skills. I will look for something in people management and all of that, right? And when you actually go by the keyword skimming approach, it's very much possible for recruiters to actually look at resume in six seconds, which is why it is really important for you to actually use keywords in your resume throughout. Uh, okay, so my screen is hang. Okay. So how to use keywords in resume and cover letter, right? So again, uh, we have talked a little bit about this, how you can actually find out. And uh, so you can use variations of keywords. Now, when I say variations, what I literally mean is you can use a lot of acronyms and uh, synonyms for the keywords of your industry. For example, when you're talking about uh, your degree, which is Bachelor of Arts, Somewhere, if you have, because of lack of space, somewhere you have mentioned BA, in the resume, you can also talk about Bachelor of Arts, right? And you can use, uh, for people management, you can also use some synonyms of that, intertwined in your different experiences. So make sure that you use variations of keywords. The reason I'm saying is this, because ATS softwares actually search and count resumes in order of keyword frequency, and they place higher value on more important keywords. Now, we don't know what are the important keywords which are set in the system for a particular job. So what we can do is we can use variations of keywords so that it increases our chances to get selected by the software. I mean, a lot of companies these days are just reliant on softwares, right? A lot of companies don't even do manual scanning. Manual scanning comes to the second stage. So if your resume is getting rejected at the first stage, which is by the software, what to do? So this is how you actually play it around. Then uh, you use hard skills for the majority of your keywords and phrases. So, you know, the soft skills, of course, they do have a lot of importance, uh, but also let's keep in mind from a piece of paper, it's not very easy to judge and gauge how proficient the person is in public speaking. Now, public speaking is a soft skill. But if I talk about public, public speaking, it's very hard to gauge, you know, if you write something very general as I'm good in this. No. So if you have very, very specific achievement in public speaking, let's say you achieved, uh, you uh, won some sort of national championship in debating competition, write about it. But majorly focus on hard skills because hard skills are placed and given more rank in the ATS softwares, right? Then incorporate keywords and phrases throughout, not just in one section, but throughout. So in your resume introduction, in resume introduction, we'll have a brief summary of your skills and experience to include there, include in work history section, include in education and training, and in the skill section. Now, to actually do a good job at this, um, it's, it's very important before you even sit down to make a resume, you just sit with a pen and paper you just see whatever you have done so far. You just start putting the keywords 
and keywords actually start fitting in you know um, um so you start fitting in those keywords when you're writing on paper right don't start immediately with the word document you know making the resume but actually just sit down first gather all the points and make a story first just draft a story for yourself then it will become really easy for you to actually you know pinpoint all these things in different sections of your resume uh yes i mean these some of the things that we talk actually might sound very very um, plain and you know like that's so obvious but having come across like seriously hundreds of resume i feel i mean the, even the most advanced resumes um, um, applications for most experienced people also lack very very basic things so keep your objective statements to the point to the short uh, when i'm looking at the first three four lines of your summary i'm looking at a very brief statement as to what you're looking for you know what are your vision and aim from this particular position you're looking so don't make it like five page of a five line or six line uh, statement you know uh, getting more dreamy about the position and sounding more ambitious list only the required contact information so i mean we don't need to uh, as recruiters we don't need your street details we don't need your street name building name etc these days and especially in this era we all reach you out through email or phone number right we are in this digital era so we really don't need that information so if you start actually removing all the information which is not required you make a lot more space to actually fit more valuable information in that one page so actually if you are very careful every important detail can fit on one page and that is the art right anyone can make a four page or document but the art and the skill lies in making a beautiful structured document in a condensed format so that is what you're going to do um then focus on accomplishments not job descriptions now this point is actually relevant for people who are lateral hires who's it's not the first job but actually looking for a switch in the career it's a lateral position basically so when they actually when you actually talk about your uh, you know role in your work experience don't start talking about your job description day to day activities etc focus on very very specific accomplishments accomplishments or uh, uh, things you have learned skills in very very specific sense not a very general vague statement then talk about uh, more specifics because when you talk about more things in specifics and numbers it gives more credibility to your resume say for example you are in sales career and you said you uh, actually turned around a brand and make made your territory profitable this is a very general and vague statement when you are saying profitable how much profitable if you have made it 1% 2% 10% or what because if you have added 10% growth as compared to 100% growth there is a difference right there is a difference in how impactful and skillful you are so talk about specific things and include more numbers to your resume to make it you know sound more credible and please for god's sake please have professional email address as this is especially the case with people who are looking for the first job i mean william the dude uh, at gmail.com all the all this you know like embarrassing email ids that we made for ourselves when we were kids they don't work they are like such turn off uh, you know things in your resume so create a professional email address for sure um align your content to the left we've talked about it because i spent only like 6 to 8 to 10 seconds to make it more skimmable for me and to all the recruiters align or everything to the left and we find basic things you know make strategic use of bold and caps and italics and all of that uh so these are yeah, i mean i i try to cover a lot of these things in a very very uh, concise format given only like you know 15 20 minutes and uh, whatever questions you guys can have uh, we can just open the floor as ricky would suggest uh hello am i audible to all yes you are audible uh may i know the difference between a resume and a cv um actually these terms are very interchangeably used uh, ricky so uh i think these are things that we should not really worry about in the sense i'll tell you because a mm -hmm. lot of companies 
they just very vaguely talk about you know send your cv or resume or send your cv or resume or uh, send your cv or so these are very interchangeably used however one is the shorter form one is the longer form but again why we should not bother about it i explain because mm -hmm. if you make one short form and one longer form you just get one shot to send something to the recruiter mm -hmm. and if you think that you know they might are using it interchangeably and you send a shorter form when they are asking for short, you know by your mm -hmm. regard you might actually screw it up because if you mm -hmm. have got only one shot just make one resume one 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 page of which actually mm -hmm. does the job job of course okay and one more thing i want to ask that uh, I have learned that we need to mention the SWOT analysis of ourselves in our resume. Yes. So, is it right or not? Ah, uh, it is not right. So, when you talk about okay. a SWOT, right? SWOT basically mm -hmm. strength, of, uh, weakness, opportunity, and threats, right? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. when we look at companies, it stands for companies. Mm -hmm. Now, if for example, let's look at a brand Maggie. Mm -hmm. So, if a Maggie brand has to advertise itself. on any platform why mm -hmm. will they talk about their weakness why will they talk about their threats mm -hmm. i mean does not make sense you get only 6 to 10 seconds you just want to do the best shot you just want to present your best self uh, so it's majorly strength led okay. however when you actually land a job interview when you are having a conversation you are more you know you have got that opportunity to talk so when you get mm -hmm. that opportunity to talk you can share your you know be, mm -hmm. i will say again you share your weakness you mm -hmm. present them as an opportunity mm -hmm. like for example if i would say that my weakness is i uh, mm -hmm. you know sometimes there is delay in my work because i look for perfection so yeah. if i would present it in a way that it does not sound a weakness so i mm -hmm. might say things like you know um definitely i'm constantly looking for perfection which uh, mm -hmm. is not always advisable Because okay if i am saying to recruiter myself i sometimes end up delaying the work come on i'll be fired mm. before even joining <laughs> so yeah. so what does not fit in for the resume because it's it's i mean you you can't project your weaknesses because we none of us are uh, you know uh, perfect okay great uh, so i just want to say a gigantic thank you for giving an excellent coverage on this topic and definitely it is going to help us a lot thank I you so much thank you so much i'm glad yeah me uh, me too thank you thank you